So down goes the shield. Come on, get that shield. All right, now let's trigger the ultimate. Let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can get. So they're just steady 175s. There's 526. But where's my million? There's 799. Fastidious. Fastidious. How the heck are you, everybody? My name is Fastidious. Welcome to my channel. Let's get right into it. We are doing a hero spotlight today in the beautiful game Watcher of Realms. And that spotlight is going to be on this chick right here. You could guess it, Valeria. So this is going to be a brand new fighting champion that's coming out in like 12 hours from when I'm recording this. By the time this comes out, she'll already be out in the game. So maybe you can go pull and try to get her. Uh, very cool champion. The way we're going to do this, folks, is we're going to do, first off, just like a hero introduction and an overview of her base stats. And I've got some sources of comparison to really help you peg where she lies in the game in terms of her strength, her durability, things like that. Then we'll just go over her kit really quickly. And then qu pretty quickly after that, I want to go in and do a damage test. So I want to do a one-to-one -one comparison with the exact same gear between her and a champion all of us have and all of us really love and that's gonna be Wrath. And if we look over here, you can see I already got Wrath wearing the gear set I built out for her. Um, so it's a bit more appropriate for her than him, but actually they, they match up pretty well. So we got our A5 Wrath, Awakened 5 Wrath against our Unawakened Valeria. But let's start this off by chatting about Valeria. So, interesting unit. Um, you can see her gear's off, it's all on Wrath. Um, but she's actually a two faction member character in the game. Uh, so she is going to be a nightmare and a chaotic faction member. Uh, pretty significant because she kind of really fits the archetypes that's been so far, I guess, delineated in the game uh, in terms of the characters that are already in those factions. So she's got a lot of stuff in her kit, as you're gonna see, that's all about having low health, very chaotic. Fits really well with all those kind of champions, especially those lords. But also, she, you know, she's a very high-powered, high-attack level fighting unit, and we have plenty of those in the Nightmare faction. So she fits in very nicely. So shout out to Jonks, a member of my community, who provided me with like a master list of every hero's stat, every hero that's already out in the game, all their stats. Um, so I was able to find some averages. So if we look at just the legendary fighters, there's 10 of them out in the game right now. Valeria will make 11. Uh, the average health that you see on those champions is 21,611.5. And the average attack is 5,270.4. So let's see how this girl stacks up. I've already fully skilled her up, promoted her up, everything. Uh, she, so she's level 60, six stars of promotion. She's ready to go. Let's check these attributes right now. So you can see she's got very healthy numbers that stack up very favor favorably to other uh, legendary fighting units currently in the game. So, uh, you can see here's the faction bonuses, but if we ignore those, she's got just less than 26,000 base HP, very strong, and just under 20, uh, just under 6,200 base attack, which is incredibly high, incredibly high. That would actually put her as the, let me just check here, she would be tied with, let me check who this is over here. I believe it's going to be uh, Lugaru, uh, as the second highest attack unit in the entire game. So let's just find that source of comparison because Lugaru is one of the people I already had on my list. So if we look here at Lugaru, I'm, I believe it's him. Uh, so let's do max level. Yes, yeah, 6172. So she has almost the exact same stats as Lugaru. Uh, another really fantastic champion that came out during that ancient summoning event. Uh, pretty cool. Um, you can see she has a bit higher HP. If we go back to Valeria, I think she's a bit over 26,000, right? Did I get that right? Actually, she has, I think she has the exact same base stats as Lugaru. So what a perfect comparison. 6172, 259. Let me just double check that. Um, I was planning to compare to Lugaru. It didn't catch my eye until right now that I think they have the exact same base stats, at least in terms of yeah, in terms of HP and attack. They have these same base stats. And how appropriate, because they're both chaotic and nightmare units. So is this a Lugaru reskin? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Her kit's really unique. Uh, as you'll see, she's really cool. And I, I was shocked by the amount of damage she put out in my test. So hopefully you guys will be impressed as well. I um, mean, say another comparison that we could make is to maybe everyone's favorite, Salazar. That still remains even after the introduction of uh, Valeria, the highest base attack in the game. Uh, so 6,500. However, he's a bit lower than Valeria and Lugaru in terms of health. Um, but yeah, she, she stacks up really nicely. She is very, very powerful just in terms of her base stats. I think that's always important to consider because base stats are how you scale all the, all the gear that you're gonna put on them and how you're gonna design their builds. It's all gonna be based upon that. Um, so without further ado, let's get right on into looking at her skills. Like I said, I fully skilled her up. So all the skills I read here will be the max versions. 
Uh, let's just start left to right and then we'll do the ultimate last. So she's got a physical attack, A1, skilled up. This got up to 120% damage to one enemy. Pretty solid. I mean, any high number damage is gonna be great for her because she's got such high base attack. Here we got Plunging Slash. This is where a lot of her cool stuff comes in. Smashes the target, dealing 300% damage and inflicting vulnerability of, to physical damage. And she puts out physical damage, so that works out really well. During the ultimate, each attack reduces Plunging Slash's cooldown by three seconds. So this does go off a lot. Um, it's got a nice, I guess, an inherent synergy there because the ultimate's up. Uh, as you can see here, it's going to be 16 seconds, and then this is going to be a 20 second cooldown, but every time it hits, it goes down to 3 seconds, so it can kind of cycle back and forth quite nicely. Um, then we got a Will of Steel, her passive. When HP drops below 30%, restores 6% HP per second. Triggers the falling effect instead, of, instead during the hero's ultimate. The hero enters the unyielding state. So unyielding, if you guys have Baron, you might be familiar. Uh, this is where you can't die, basically. Um, so you're like at zero, but you won't die from any more damage. Uh, and this, uh, upon taking fatal damage and dies immediately when the ultimate ends, which can be triggered up to one time per deployment. And you can see, um, it's, this starts as only a 2% HP recovery and you scale it up all the way to six. Um, so she can, uh, when the ultimate's up, she'll stay in that unyielding state and otherwise she can really get a nice self heal to keep her. The way it works, at least from my testing so far, is it, it kind of hits that sweet spot for a chaotic faction member unit where like a lot of her kit is about, hey, we're going to put out more damage, as you're going to see, put out more damage when our health is lower, but we don't want to go too low to die. So she kind of, it, it's a nice balancing act. And so far from my testing, it works pretty well. Finally, she has like what I think is the standard passive for chaotic member faction units. Uh, chaotic faction units uh, reduces the hero's cost in the arena by four, which is really nice for her because she's already a slightly low cost uh, champion. I can just show you that really quickly. So she's got two block like you'd expect, but only 17 costs. So if we look at someone like Arrogance or uh, what's another good? I think Ra no, Wrath is 16, but Arrogance is, is 18 costs, right? So she's one less, but then with that special thing, only 13 costs to use her in the arena. These chaotic units are, you know, they're pay to win units. They're very good for the arena. <laughs> That's no coincidence. So finally, let's get to her ultimate and then we'll talk about her talent. Her talent's super good. Her ultimate, damage plus 120%. So just straight up, whatever damage she was gonna do is now that times 2.2. Very good. Uh, each attack consumes 10% of current HP. So now you've got that classic chaotic faction member thing going on where she's wasting her own HP because that's when she's gonna get big benefits. That's how they all kind of work. Generates one stack of power of the sword up to eight stacks. So let's see what power of the sword is. Burst damage to the main target increases by 50% with each stack after the skill ends. And this can be insanely high. I'm talking about, you're gonna see a hit for over a million damage. Crazy. Uh, the hero cannot be healed during the skill. When the skill ends, uh, deals 440% burst damage to the main target and four targets around them. So she's got a touch of AOE burst in there too, but uh, we're gonna take her into the guild boss and you'll see there's some big damage coming coming your way that you're gonna see from her. Um, but yeah, and keep in mind, she can't be healed, but also when the ultimate's active, uh, that changes, uh, which what is it? The will of seal passive, that instead of uh, getting the heal, she will get that unyielding effect. Finally, she's got the yeah, very classic chaotic faction talent, increases attack and defense when HP drops. When HP drops to 30%, so, she's, so that means when she's lost 70%, not when she has lost 30% and is at 70%, that took me a second to get the reading correctly. Uh, the increase peaks at 60%, so just a straight up 60% boost to attack and defense, so a touch of tankiness and certainly a touch of damage. Uh, unclear if this is linear, you know, does this mean when she's lost, uh, in, so if she's lost 70%, she's all the way down to 30, she gets these, these maxes. So she's only lost 35% and she's at 65% health. Are the peak? Are they peaking at 30% or is that is that where they're lying? The bonuses, I don't know. Uh, that will take a lot more testing. But yeah, that is gonna be Valeria. Uh, so she's kind of like a burst damage fighter, um, very chaotic in the sense that she kind of lives, as you will see, in like a low health area. However, the, the damage is pretty big and that is certainly helped by the enormous base stats we got on her. So I will quickly just show you Wrath, but then we'll, we'll cut after we do the run with Wrath and I'll put the gear back in her. But just to get a sense, um, also, her and Wrath have the exact same attack intervals, which works really well, so I kind of built it around that. She's the kind of unit that's definitely gonna benefit from putting more, more attacks out. So uh, we got her and Wrath, because they're both 2.6 second intervals, to minus 0.9 seconds. Uh, to do that, we had to hit an additional attack speed of 150 uh, using the attack interval chart, so we got it to 160 additional. So pretty close, pretty min-max. We got crit rate, again, very, very close. Not for Wrath, but if we're gonna use the same gear, it can't be perfect to use Wrath as a source of comparison. Crit damage is whatever. 
Attack is very healthy, as you'll see when we put it on her and it scales from that. I mean, Wrath has good base attack, so part of the reason I wanna use it, but when it scales off for her crazy base attack, you will see. Okay, so without further ado, I think the best way to do a damage test, at least if you guys have better suggestions for future spotlights on the test server and things like that, let me know in the comments. But for now, I was thinking, let's just take them into the normal guild boss, have them go one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do one round of her. Well, we'll start with Wrath. So one round of Wrath, then we'll take him, take his gear off, put it on her, and one round of her, and we'll just look at the numbers. So I think normal's the best you can see. I've already been testing it out here, so I know what the result's gonna be. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but, so Wrath is wearing his gear, and this is the team we're gonna run. So we don't need to bring any healers, because it's only normal. Uh, Rat, they both kind of have a self-heal uh, from her, uh, her passive, she gets the 6% skilled up that's gonna come uh, when she's under 30%, and Wrath, of course, at A5, gets a really nice uh, self, uh, bleh, really nice self heal. Uh, I'm gonna bring uh, both her and Wrath into the fight, as well as two more Nightmare units, so Lugaru, how appropriate, the same stats as her, and then Arrogance, um, all of these people, so right now everyone but Wrath is completely stripped of their gear, and then when we switch it, it'll be everyone but Valeria. This is just here so we can see the max effect of having Wrath's bonus applied to these Nightmare Faction units, so we need to deploy four to get that 35% attack speed increase. For anyone that doesn't know, I'll just pull it up very quickly. You probably do though if you're playing this game for a while, because a lot of us are using Nightmare units, but there you go. If you have four or more units, you're gonna get a 35% uh, attack speed boost to all the Nightmare units. Insanely powerful. So. Let's just hop in. We're gonna watch this run. I'll probably speed it up in post so we can see. Um, with with uh, Valeria, she does see as a manual ultimate, so I will have to be triggering that. With Wrath, it'll be really easy. So all I have to do is get these guys out. So we can just do Wrath there. Now just build a quick back line. So you'll see guys, as I place Arrogance, they'll all get big and it'll say 35%. And now we can just quickly take everyone but Wrath off. And now we're just gonna let this bad boy run on 2X. I'll check in on the stats. And then we'll fast forward through this really quickly. We'll meet up for the stats and then we'll quickly get some gear on Valeria and do the exact same thing. Okay, you guys, there you go. The fight is wrapped up. Uh, so the biggest number I think I saw was about 107,000 damage on a hit during uh, Wrath's ultimate. Let's just skip here. We can go to the stats. So you can see he put up about 1,162 blood. Uh, it's hard to see the exact percentage he knocked off, unfortunately, because I have done runs earlier. But you can see they're just a hair under 11 million damage. And you see, I, I got everyone out really, really quickly. So yeah, this is all his damage, right? Just, just a touch under 11 million. All right, I'll probably speed this up again too, uh, but I'll, you guys can just watch me in the fast motion. Uh, Regear uh, everything that was on Wrath straight onto her, and then we'll go right back into another fight and we'll see what Valeria can do. All right, there we go. All the gear has been transferred onto Valeria. You can see now she's at a healthy 57,000 BP. I wanna say, I have not done so much farming uh, for gear in this uh, account, um, So, but I think it actually lends itself really well because we've got a very realistic build, right? Uh, so we don't have like insane game-breaking crit damage or attack. We had to use a crit rate ring, which I don't even use on my own account, but just to make this work, because I do wanna show we're at 100% crit. I mean, we're somewhat min max in that we're at a very strong, very appropriate, um, efficient attack speed here, and then we are basically right at the cap for crit rate, but it's not a perfect build, right? She's only at only only at 57,000 uh, BP. I mean, my arrogance is higher than that, right? We've seen a lot crazier stuff than that. I mean, not even to speak of the most powerful uh, players in the game right now, but let's just do the exact same thing. So I'll do the setup, we'll fast forward through it, uh, but let's go into the guild boss. We're gonna do just normal again, the exact same run. The only difference is we're gonna take everyone out but Valeria. Um, I would probably I'll find moments to slow this down because you're gonna see some hits that are gonna be insane So we will get that Cut up and uh, zoomed in for you. That's pretty crazy. Okay, I can quickly there everyone gets nice and big You see the 35% so we can get everyone out now uh, But I'm not fully understanding what is triggering like I've seen over a million. So is, I, if anyone knows, get in the comments and let me know. 
Uh, but she's really cool. Now that she's at really low health, you know, she's, she's very good at keeping herself. You saw Wrath was fully healed the whole time, but the way her kit works, it's like very chaos faction, right? It keeps itself right at that sweet spot of like the 20 to 30% range. So down he goes, maybe it's because we need to time the ultimate with the dragons down. So lots of 86Ks. So 481,000, now they're all just steady 161. Uh, there's, okay, so I don't know if we're, there's 297. I really want to get the million. There's 734,000 again. Uh, so maybe it all needs to line up perfectly. Maybe just when I was testing it, line up, I saw 1.1 million uh, with the exact same gear, the exact same thing we're doing right now. But I mean, 734,000 on one hit is not anything to sneeze at, I think. Um, she, she's, a, she's a bad girl. She puts up a big number. I'm actually very curious, since I haven't seen those big hits, if the final number is still going to be the same as like what I saw before. I had to rush there. I was like, oh my God, the ultimate. I got to click the ultimate. See if we get any more juicy stuff. She's picking up, oh, there's 297, so not her best. Can skip ahead already. So you can see, she packs a punch. Um, I'm very, very curious. Okay, so the blood is significantly lower. This is very interesting to me, so let me guys know. In my testing, we were at like, uh, what, what, what was the blood there, like 1800? We got up to like 2200 blood. So I'm guessing, yes, this is the, I got up to like 22 million. Uh, so still quite a bit better than Wrath, but actually in my testing, she doubled Wrath. Well, I figured out what my mistake was. I have this amazing plus 25 Scarlet Hunt uh, that I had on Wrath that I forgot to move over to hers. So good job on me, my first time on the test server. Uh, but as you can see, it deals 30% extra damage to targets with bleed. There will be no bleed involved. So I just wanted to find a non-effect artifact that we could just get, you know, get high stats on and pump out some things. So we're gonna go back in there really quick. Um, I'll just show you now. So now she's up to a very healthy 66 and a half, almost six, almost a very nightmare faction appropriate 66. 6.6k um but yeah you can see here so it's it's very she's got a, she's got a big attack pool man uh, for having a crit rate uh, accessory and she's still getting this much attack is pretty crazy so let's hop right back in there and see if we can't find those millions that i was that i was dreaming about um all right so let's go to normal let's set up the same way i'll fast forward a lot more obviously this time uh just because last time I was like, what's going on? Now we now we kind of know what's going on and we can look out for just those huge numbers. But hey, 734,000 without an artifact, pretty cool. So let's set it up as quickly as I can. I'm gonna try to do my best job here. I definitely want to break 20 million on the damage like I expected. Cause yeah, I couldn't wrap my head around what the RNG was that we'd be looking at. Okay, they're all out. Now let's go, let's go, let's go. But you can see she's she's very the kit's very well built to keep her in this like 10% to 30% range. So it really does just work out that way. I'm hoping we can time out an ultimate for when the, the shield goes down. We'll see. So there it goes. Will we have a little bit of an ultimate? No, I don't see anything yet. 23,000. Now they're all settling in at 108,000. The damage ramps up a little bit as the fight goes on. Oh, that was a big one that I missed. I couldn't see. It's all happening too fast. The 2x is too much for me. So down goes the shield. Come on, get that shield. All right, now let's trigger the ultimate. Let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can get. So they're just steady 175s. There's 526. But where's my million? There's 799. She can, are we really not gonna get my million? I really wanna see that, that beautiful seven digit number. But you can see this, this damage is, is legit. This is legit. There's 324. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get my million, unfortunately, pretty sad. So it seems like once she's, there's 799 right at the end. Yeah, when she gets that big burst. Um, I wonder if we're gonna be at, at least at the final number and I might've missed something or if there is some RNG at play here. Um, so yeah, you can see we did break the 2000 blood, not as high as we were at last time. I think on damage, we were at just about 2 million, 22 million, excuse me. Oh yeah, so, so there's some RNG factor for sure. So if anyone can speak to that, let me know. But you can see, pretty significant, just under two, uh, 20 million, just less than doubling Wrath. Um, great, so let me know if you think this is a good way to test just straight out damage output. Of course, there's a lot of things going on here. Like, like Wrath is a five, he's got a lot of cool things going on. She's putting out physical vulnerability um, and she's putting out physical damage. So she's benefiting from her own debuffing really well. Whereas like if she was paired with Wrath, he would benefit from that as well too. Um, so a lot of things to consider. So I thought we'd wrap up and this is actually be new to me because I haven't checked out her awakenings. I thought we'd just look at her awakenings together and then yeah, I'll give my final thoughts. So, 
Awaken one. Uh, during the ultimate increases attack speed by 100. <laughs> that's that's pretty sweet awakening. Uh, plus five attack percent. Uh, plus five percent attack. Yeah, it's classic A2. Boring A2, I think. During the ultimate, ignores 20% of the enemy's defense. Okay, so that's nutty. So her A3 is just crazy already. So I'm curious what's to come on A4 and A5. Create 8%, it's fine. And then during the ultimate, there's a 50% chance to accumulate two powers, two stacks of power of the sword for each attack, up to 12 stacks. Okay, so if you guys want, I can get back in here in another video and we can test that out. I can fully awaken her. Uh, we've got plenty of the materials. Like fortunately, we get like the unlimited materials on this test server. Um, we, I'd be happy to do that. That is crazy. So we were settling, I think, for six stacks, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it eight? Eight stacks. So we're gonna get 50% more stacks. That's where the crazy damage was coming from. Um, and double hits. Plus, if we're all already past the A3, we'll get the 20% ignore damage. Except ignore def defense. Uh, I think she's really cool. I think uh, my concluding thoughts. I think she's quite a good champion. I think she's definitely better than people are making her out to be right now. Uh, in anticipation, just being like broke here, broke here, broke here. We don't care about her. I do think there's some justification in that she's just a crazy DPS, uh, just a crazy DPS. She's a great DPS. I think there's gonna be some finagling to make sure she always stays in that uh, HP threshold she needs to be. By herself, she does it quite well. Uh, I guess at least against these easy guild bosses. But I'm curious if you're building a full team and you're not building specifically a chaotic team. I mean, that's a great actually conclusive thought. I think if you're building like a chaotic team. Um, let me just find the Lords. And you have like Gon or Vladov, wherever they are. Uh, I clicked Nightmare, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not even used to there being a chaotic button. So yeah, if you have like Gon, that's not Gon. What am I doing? Where are you, buddy? Well, let's just say Vladov because he's right here. Why can't I find Gon? Where, where, where is this? Is this him? Yes, okay. So like with Gon and with these Lord skills and everything working so well together, Faction Allies get 20% attack and defense bonus when HP is below 30% on top of her own 60%. Uh, I mean, that's crazy. And then especially in the arena with the reduced cost, these chaotic, the chaotic Faction members are made for the arena. So like if you are a spender, and especially like, and if you want to build some crazy chaotic uh, Faction team, I do think she's going to be tremendously good. Um, especially if you get some awakenings into her. But I think for the average player, especially if Arena isn't your focus, uh, she's one that would be really fun to have, but not gonna be a game-breaking fighter like something like Arrogance or Salazar. I don't think she's gonna be at that level, uh, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. Uh, overall, I'm not gonna give her a grade or anything. I'm just gonna say I think she's pretty good, and I think anyone should be excited if they pull her. I also think she looks really cool with this glowing red sword. She's got these box braids. All in all, cool champion release. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions for future Hero Spotlights, please get in the comments and let me know. Like the video if you liked it. Comment if you want to comment. Share it with your mom if you think, if you think she would enjoy it. My name is Fastidious. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.